Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Welcome to worship here at F Worth. We are glad you're with us this morning. Those of you who might be watching us online or on uh, Sudden Lake Channel 6, we'd like to welcome you. Make sure you tell us that you're watching uh, and taking part in the worship service today. You can do that in several ways. You can call the church office anytime and let Carol know or leave a message on her voicemail. Uh, you can also go to our Facebook uh, webcast and you can just type in good morning. We count you that way. So let us know you're uh, worshiping with us this morning. If you're here in the sanctuary, we ask if you would pull the little blue card out from your place there and make sure you can pull, fill out one per family. Just put your name and, and that you're here today. That helps us uh, count your uh, attendance this morning. Uh, this morning we're taking communion a little bit different. This is our first Sunday in, uh, in September. So you will find on the back table back there, if you did not get them when you came in, or over here on the side over here, it looks like there's maybe a few left over there. But we would like everybody to grab your own communion elements and have them with you in the, in the uh, congregation. We're not going to be processing forward as we normally would. We're going to take communion in place. So if you've gotten your communion elements and ready, you get the big thumbs up. If you haven't, during the first hymn, if you go back to the back and, and pick them up, that would be great. I uh, want to remind you of some announcements this morning. Uh, we've got the Bible study starting mid-month this morning, or, or this, uh, this September. Uh, two women's Bible studies. Uh, one will be on Tuesday morning. One will be on Wednesday evening. Both will be held upstairs in the TV studio, there's plenty of room up there and you can social distance and, and masks are, uh, are, are in strongly, strongly encouraged to be worn during the Bible studies. Also, uh, this week, just to kind of let you know and keep you in the know, we've had some phone system issues here at the church. Come to find out we've been operating on a 2009 system and we've kind of Kind of maxed everything out. We've got some issues with that. We're going to try to get them fixed later this coming week. But that might also entail with the entire phone system of the church being down for the entire day. Because we're going to have to completely reprogram everything. So, And it's going to be a chore in that. So some of the door fob uh, boxes are not working. I tell you, the door fob box underneath the carport is. Nothing else really is at this point. We've kind of robbed Peter to pay Paul on some of those things, on the parts and everything, and move things around. But uh, that'll be coming up uh, this week. Hopefully, we get it fixed by next Sunday. Those are our announcements this morning. Again, we are just, uh-oh, he's got one. Maybe. Maybe. There you go. All right. I have been asked to remind you all if you have not, shame on you, number one, and you're missing out if you don't do this. Blue, we've, got a couple of, we've got a couple of young folks that are selling blue and gold for, um, for, uh, for 4-H and, and vocational ag. Uh, bacon and sausage and chicken and all other kinds of good stuff. Uh, this, is, is it this week is the last week? This week is the last week, so um, so we got a couple of folks that are are selling blue and gold. Uh, one sitting right here, Zach's one is here up Justin's in the up balcony. There. Uh, they're they're wave at you. Um, help support these young folks and and get some really good food at the same time. Uh, appreciate it. And I think the money's due this week, right? Yeah, so I, my wife's got your money if she hadn't given okay. it to you already, so I want to make sure and, and pay my dues. But <laughs> as we gather for worship, let us just put everything else beside us and behind us and focus what is important today, and that's focusing all our heart and our mind to worshiping God this morning as we begin our worship service this morning. Good morning. If you will please stand and join me in singing our hymn of praise.
if you would, please remain standing for our call to worship this morning. What would it be like? If we trust God completely. What would it be like? If we were aware of God's presence with us all the time. What would it be like? If we could worship God Let us draw near to the God who's already drawn near to us. Lord, we come just as we are. Accept us. Help us understand. We offer ourselves in worship to you. You will remain standing for our songs of praise, those who trust. to trust in the Lord are a strong mountain they will not they will not not be moved those who trust
Now then, okay, all right. Thank you. That was good. That was good. Steve started us off, I, I think maybe even um, un unknowingly, you started us off uh, last week with your sermon text out of James. Um, and and that leads in beautifully to the next several weeks. We're going to be focusing on uh, some passages in Scripture called a uh, wisdom literature. James falls into that uh, along with some other uh, some other writings in Scripture. We want to focus on one of those. Uh, uh, locations called wisdom literature this morning with our reading out of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs. Some selected, selected verses out of the 23rd or 22nd chapter of the book of Proverbs. And the writer says to us this. A good reputation is better than much wealth. High esteem is better than silver and gold. 
the rich and the poor have this in common. The Lord made them both. And again, in the eighth verse, those who sow injustice will harvest evil. The rod of their fury will come to an end. Happy are generous people because they give some of their food to the poor. And again, in the 22nd verse, don't steal from the poor because they're poor. Don't oppress the needy at the gate. The Lord will take up their case and press the life out of those who oppress them. And I know that's not in our bulletin, but if you would indulge me, this from the second chapter of the book of James. My brothers and sisters, when you show favoritism, you deny the faithfulness of the Lord Jesus Christ, who has been resurrected in glory. Imagine two coming into your meeting. One has a gold ring and fine clothes, while the other is poor, dressed in filthy rags. And then suppose that you were to take special notice of the one wearing fine clothes, saying to him, here is an excellent place, sit here. But to the poor person you see, you, you, but to the poor person you say, stand over there or, or sit here at my feet. Wouldn't you have shown favoritism among yourselves and become an evil-minded judge? My dear brothers and sisters, listen, hasn't God chosen those who are poor by worldly standards to be rich in terms of faith? Hasn't God chosen the poor as heirs of the kingdom he has promised to those who love him? You dishonor the poor, but you have dishonored the poor. Don't the wealthy make life difficult for you? Aren't they the ones who drag you into court? Aren't they the ones who insult the good name spoken over you at your baptism? You do well when you really fulfill the royal law found in Scripture that says, love your neighbor as yourself. But when you show favoritism, you are committing a sin. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. You know, this, this book, this book that we, that we read from every week, it, it's not just one book, right? You, you, you know that. It, it, is, it is a collection, it is a collection of many books authored by many different people. Some, some of those uh, people we can specifically identify, others will forever remain anonymous. And this book was written, this collection of books was written over a span of some 1,500 years one of the really wonderful gifts of the Bible is found in, in, in its variety, right? There, there's a variety of, of writers, and there's also a, a variety of literary styles, of, of genres uh, that are contained in Scripture. There's... There's writings that are the law. There, there's writing in the Bible that is considered history. There are parables. There, there's uh, passages that are allegorical. There are passages that are metaphorical. There's prophecy. There's personal letters. And there's poetry, beautiful poetry. 
the book of Proverbs and the book of James, along with with other books like Job and and Ecclesiastes and and Song of Songs and, and some of the sayings of Jesus in the New Testament, form what biblical scholars commonly refer to as wisdom literature. The purpose of biblical wisdom, not surprisingly, is to help us live wisely, to help us us live our lives better. I think we would all like to know how best to live, or at least how to live better than we currently are. Everyone, everyone I know desires wisdom. The world surely could use a little more wisdom right now. We desire it for ourselves. We desire wisdom for our children. We, we know that because parents, and, and many of you are parents, parents often offer bits of wisdom to often even more disinterested children. <laughs> but sometimes it sticks, right? Sometimes it takes. Here's one that you probably all have heard, and, and you heard it as children, and, and many of you have said it as parents. Wash behind your ears. My mom used to say, Always put on clean underwear before you go out. I never really understood how that was going to make my life better. I was pretty sure that it was was an attempt to keep me from embarrassing her. Another one that that my mom used to say was, was be nice to people and they'll be nice to you. As I've gotten older, I've reflected on that, and I think that was a good try, Mom, but it really doesn't work that way. Every generation and every culture has its own proverbial sayings. Some of these are, are really wise, some of them not so much. Some of them are not imbued with true wisdom at all. How often have we heard, or maybe even some of us said, he who dies with the most wins? Or, or, or this one, do unto others before they do unto you. I was a little late on that. I had a whole yard full of flamingos this week. Here's one I've used myself many times. No good deed goes unpunished. I'm sure that you all can think of many others. That's what, that's what proverbs are. That's what proverbial sayings are. They're, they are these, they are these unique uh, little one-liners that at their best point us uh, on the right path or, 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 or try to, to impart some wisdom for life. Scripture has many such Proverbs. Here, here are a few that you may familiar, be familiar with. From the very first chapter of Proverbs, Proverbs 1, number 7, uh, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. It's a great one. Or, or, or this one, train up a child the right, in the right way, and when they are old, they will not stray from it. Proverbs 22 Verse 6. Or, or, or here's one, here's one. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained from living righteously. Some of you have been particularly righteous, I see. And 
And then this one from our text this morning. And it is echoed in our reading from James. A good name is more desirable than riches, and it is to be esteemed. It is better than silver and gold. That all sounds really good. But here's the thing. I've never really cared much about or cared much for proverbial sayings. They're the, they're the kind of things that, that we like to tell others, but we seldom like to hear ourselves. We don't like, and I'm lumping you in with me because I don't like, I don't like them because, because too often we have seen that the world doesn't work that way. Who, who, who really believes... Who really believes that all I needed to know I learned in kindergarten? Who, who really believes that, 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 that early to bed, early to rise makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise? Really? Maybe, maybe not. Because I sure do know a whole lot of folks who are poor, who are very, very poor, that work hard, that work long hours, many more hours than, than those of us who are, 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 are wealthy. And I wonder what have they gained from all their labor? You see, the, the, these two predictable, the, these two, if you do that, you'll always get this kind of thing, doesn't always work. And that's why some preachers I know, not all, but some preachers I know, seldom ever preach out of Proverbs. Because there, there seems to be at some level a disconnect. It doesn't always work that way. But sometimes, sometimes there is something there. Sometimes, sometimes it nails us. A good name a good name is more desirable than riches. Now, I suspect that all of us would agree that a person with a good name is understood to be someone, to be a person who has great integrity. I'm not trying to put words into your mouth, but, but I think that we can agree on that. I think that we can agree that a person with integrity lives in such a way that demonstrates integrity and that that is certainly a sign of a wise person. Solomon of Scripture, Solomon is traditionally associated with uh, Proverbs. Ask God, remember, Sol Solomon asked God not for riches, not for power, but rather he asked God for a discerning heart that he might govern his people, that he might lead his people justly. Is that not a request from a man who shows great integrity and uprightness? See, the, the significance of name or, or the significance of having a good name in this case goes, goes beyond the life of the individual uh, in the culture of the ancient Hebrews. Name for the ancient Hebrew people, also identifies the community, not just the individual. If you remember your, 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 your uh, Hebrew history, you remember that God promised Moses to establish the name of his people 
the chosen people, the community of Israel, that, that they would bear his name. In the apocryphal book, Sirach, we don't often read from that in, in, in Methodist circles. But in the apocryphal book, Sirach, uh, the, the writer speaks of the importance of a name for the Israelite people. And when it says that the community, uh, when it says of the community, that a virtuous name will never be blotted out. Have regard for your name since it will outlive you. The days of a good life are numbered, but a good name lasts forever. So while maintaining a good name was important for the community in the ancient Hebrew society, and the New Testament writers were concerned about issues uh, like self-serving pride, and greed. In all four Gospels, for instance, Jesus is often seen admonishing folks who supposedly had a good name. And the folks that Jesus got after the most were people like me. Clergy. Scribes and priests. Pharisees. They were all called out by Jesus for their arrogance, for their pride, for their greed. James, Jesus' brother, we read this morning, James calls the faithful to live a life of honesty and fairness, devoid of partiality. Such a life would certainly result in one having a good name. But maybe some of you are sitting there thinking, well, yeah, preacher, but look, that was then. This is, this is now. We're not, we're not like that, right? We're, we're too nice for that. Today, we think of those people who are nice as being people with good names. I've got mom's voice echoing in my mind's ear, right? But listen to what the sage of Proverbs says. The intent of this encouragement towards a good name goes much deeper than niceness. Even the character traits of Jesus that we strive to emulate go way beyond simply being nice. Right? Philip Yancey um, Wrote a, wrote a book, uh, The Jesus I Never Knew. And in this book, Philip Yancey contends that to see Jesus as a nice guy or, or to see Jesus' message uh, that, that we are to be nice misses the point. Yancey says, or asked specifically, how would telling people to be nice to each other get a man crucified? What government would execute Mr. Rogers? See, Webster's defines the word nice this way. Being agreeable, being passive, being socially acceptable. Our texts don't call us to be nice. Nowhere in scripture do we find the people of God called to simply be nice 
as Christians, as followers of Jesus, yes, absolutely, we are called to be nonviolent. And yes, we are absolutely called to be peaceable. But never, ever, ever are we called to be passive. This is a difficult message to hear. It's a difficult, it's a difficult message to preach. It's difficult because you all are nice folks. We're nice, right? Some of us are nicer than others. Not naming names. We're nice people. But look, we can never ever settle for simply being nice people who gather each week in this nice church building. And you know why we cannot settle for that? Because that is the kind of thinking that has done more to make church unattractive and boring and irrelevant than anything else. And it makes, it makes the church boring and irrelevant and unattractive to a world, to a world out there that is especially looking for something. You see, I believe that people are desperately searching for something, something to love, something to be, something to be passionate about. I think we should be passionate and nice is a good thing, but nice is a long way from passion. I think, I think we should be passionate. I think we should be passionate about loving God. I think we should be passionate about loving each other. I think we should be passionate about serving people, especially those in need. I think we need we should be I think we should be passionate uh, in, in our generosity. I think we should be passionate about following God's wisdom. And that is what I think the sage of Proverbs is writing about when he talks about having a good name, being passionate about the things that we do in God, with God, through God. It was... Uh, I believe it was a January night. The year was 1957. There was a young pastor sitting in the kitchen of, of his home uh, in Montgomery, Alabama. He was holding a cup of coffee in his hand because he was unable to sleep. He was unable to sleep because, because the bus boycott seemed to be falling apart and his life had been threatened repeatedly. And as he stared into the blackness of the coffee in that cup, he prayed for strength. He prayed for courage. And in that moment, he felt something. He felt a steadying presence. And he heard this inner voice speaking to him. And that voice said to him, Martin Luther, stand up. Stand up for righteousness. Stand up for justice. Stand up for truth. And lo, I will be with you always, even to the end of the earth. And we know, we know that what transpired after that was a life lived in passion 
for God, for God's people. A good name is better than riches. Several years ago, Debbie and I, when we were when we were still living in Louisiana, we were we were part of a group of adults that that worked with the youth group of the church. It was a it was a large youth group, and there were there were several of us adults that that were uh, part of a volunteer adult staff, and and there was a lady on this staff with us. And she was absolutely passionate about working with those kids and serving God and serving Christ. And every time, every time that the, that the youth would gather together to go on a trip, whether it was a trip across town, a trip across the country, whether it was a trip for mission or a fun trip, Sherry would stand up. She would stand in the middle of all those young people and she would look them in the eye and she said, listen to me. Remember who you are and remember whose you are. She was reminding them of their name in Jesus Christ. She was reminding them that God had a claim on them and that they in turn had claimed God. She was reminding them that their actions and their words were important because people were watching. She was reminding them to act with that that strange combination of humility And passion. She was reminding them to be people of integrity. She was reminding them of their name. A good name is more desirable than riches. That's the thing. That's the thing about these words of scriptural wisdom, whether they're found in the sayings of the sage of proverb, whether they are found in the words uh, spoken by Jesus, or whether they're found in the writings of the Old Testament, I mean of the New Testament. Regardless of where we read them, the words of these wisdom writers are uncompromising. They are demanding. They require much. A good name, this kind of good name is born out of passionate faithfulness to serve Christ and to serve others in the name of of Christ Jesus. In these days of, of, of distrust and disinformation and pandemic and violence, fear causes us to want to retreat from the world around us. In these days when, when the wisdom of the world says, claim your rights over the well-being of others, when the wisdom of the world says, get all you can regard, while you can, regardless of who might be hurt. In these days, when outrageous behavior is rewarded and, and, and selfish self-promotion is considered acceptable, even desirable, in these days, when many are reluctant to live with real passion for others, the words of wisdom from Scripture remind us precisely that these are the days when the people of God are called to stand and to live in truth and humility and integrity, and passion. 
These, these are the days we are to choose a good name to remember who we are and whose we are and what we're about. People of God, remember who you are. Choose a good name. For we are citizens of a holy community. We are the body of Christ. Here. And for the world. In the name of the Father. And the Son. And the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, we give you thanks that you have been faithful to us. Remind us who we are and whose we are. Amen. Amen. I would invite you to stand as you're able. Let us lift our voices together as we profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Sisters and brothers in Christ, God calls us all, God names us all, and claims us, and invites us to be part of the holy community. We do that when we live into that, when uh, we give ourselves in the name of Christ for others, we live into that when we share the holy meal. Let us, let us confess our sins before God and before each other. Will you join me in the confession of heart? God of all. We come to you with broken hearts. We have broken faith with one another and with you. Our hearts have been led astray by the promises of the world. We have failed to live into your intention for our lives. We have failed to view your image in one another and have taken your creation for granted, taken what we wanted, and harmed others in the process. We have sinned. Forgive us. Purify us. Heal us. Fill us with your love for you. Fill us with your love for one another. Remove from us confusion about needs and desires. Restore us fully to you, O oh God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news this morning. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Will you please stand and join me in singing Victory in Jesus.
next part of our worship service is our offering this morning. We invite those who might be watching us on Channel 6 or online. You can go to our website at fworth.info, and you can go to the top right-hand corner, and you can pay through push, push pay there, and you can uh, do your offering that way. You can also mail your offering to uh, 420 West Iowa here in Chickasha, 73018. And also, you can drop it by the church anytime this week. We have several who do that. Here in the sanctuary this morning, we will not be passing the plates as we have reinstituted some of our COVID procedures. You'll find our offering plates on the corner of the altar here. As we prepare for our offering this morning, let's pray. Father God, you are good and you are gracious, Lord. And Father, we thank you for as we come to you this morning in our house of worship to worship you. Lord, we praise you and we just, we just love you. And as we give our offerings this morning, Lord, we do so with open hearts and open minds in our love for you. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image. You breathed your, you breathed your breath into us and gave us life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made covenant to be our sovereign God and you spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with all your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. 
and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry and he ate with sinners. And by the baptism of a suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and you delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you and he broke the bread and he turned and gave it to all his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when that supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, drink the rest, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves this morning in praise and in thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the earth until Christ comes in final victory and we share at his at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is, your, is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with confidence of children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So because we want to um, be very careful for each of you and each other, we're going to modify our uh, communion uh, a little bit this morning. We're not going to have you come down. We've invited you all to uh, pick up uh, a couple of, of cups, one with bread one with juice. If you, if you uh, have not um, been able to, to get uh, a cup with bread and juice, uh, our ushers have a tray. They can uh, bring it to you. Just, just uh, let, let us know by raising a hand. Um, I don't know if there's any up in our balcony. I don't see any hands. But here's how we will do this. We're going to invite you in just a moment uh, to take the lids off. You can eat the bread. You can drink the juice. You can dip the bread into the juice. But we eat and we drink. We share this holy meal. As Jesus was with those closest to him, the night he gave himself for us, they gathered around the table, they shared a meal, they, they, they told the stories of their people. 
And Jesus says, do this. And remember, do this and remember. So I invite you now to, to take the bread, to take the juice, to eat and to drink and remember. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant now that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? standing for our song of sending forth in Christ alone.
is so good to see you this morning. So very happy that you have chosen to spend this time with us in worship of God. We pray that you have had an experience this morning of the divine. We pray that, that you have known the presence of Almighty God in this place, in your lives, and that that will go with you as you go out and do the things that you do this week. Remember who you are. Remember whose you are. And live in such a way that your passion for Christ is evident. You can still be nice. Please be nice. But have passion. Have passion. I want to invite you to come back next week. Summer will officially be over. Aw. We can turn the heat off. Amen. We're going to continue our journey through wisdom literature of Scripture. We're going to, we're going to still be in Proverbs next week. But I want to invite you to come back. And when you do, bring somebody with you. Now receive this blessing. May the love of Almighty God and the grace of Jesus Christ, His Son, and the ever-abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. And let it so fill your lives that everyone you meet sees it in you. That's good stuff. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.